Some of you guys asked me last week how I edited my GoPro Hero 10 video, so let's get on the computer and I show you how I did it. So let's start with cutting and pacing. It's very important, it's the most important thing when it comes to editing travel videos in general. As you can see, I edited in Final Cut Pro 10. It's just, in my opinion, the best video editor out there. And yeah, it costs $300, but you can get a 90-day free trial on the Apple website for it. So you can save $100 every month and at the end of the trial period, you have enough money to pay for it. But let's get into the time line now and as you can see I sorted this video in scenes it's not that I threw all of the clips randomly together I start with this hike here for a sunrise on top of a mountain it's the first scene and then next scene after that is here some drone shots because it really fits the music and then from the drone shots we go into the temple and show some surrounding of the temple as well and from the temple then I go to the forest area here that's the next scene from the forest we're exploring the nature a little bit more it's like connected to the forest scene so I try to give my video a structure in the first place instead of putting everything randomly together and what's important here also is that you connect the scenes with each other properly so you can see that here for example at first when I go from the viewpoint sunrise scene here into the drone scene you see a shot of me starting the drone and then we see drone shots that's a nice connection clip to lead from one scene to the other and i kind of do the same thing here with this time lapse in between so you see from this drone here you see this transition into the time lapse and the camera goes back and we suddenly into a temple so there i use a time lapse shot to connect both scenes but what i also sometimes like to do is to connect scenes by similarities so here for example in the transition from the temple to the forest scene you see that we have a shot here where you can see the temple but we also already have lots of trees in here which looks like a forest so after that I can perfectly blend in a forest shot and it feels right so that's very important in the first place to arrange your clips properly but then the next step is of course to cut it to the music you can also see that here in the timeline here the clips are pretty short and here they get a bit longer and when we now look at the music Music. Oh, listen to the music. There we can definitely see that the music is a bit faster, so I cut faster there. But now, later, here it gets slower. There you can see that the clips are a lot longer and therefore it fits better to the music. And that's important, you want to have some parts in your video that are a bit fast paced and some parts that are a bit slower, but not too slow. If you do it too long, then it's also boring to watch. And also regarding cutting and pacing, there is a common technique which is called kill your darlings. Kill your darlings doesn't mean that you should kill your partner. It means that even if you have shots that you really love, that you absolutely want to have in your video, they don't necessarily fit into the video and in that case you should remove them instead of just forcefully keeping them in and I kind of did that here we have this shot where I track Daniel with the GoPro and this is actually a one shot so I really wanted to have that in there fully to show that you can walk for such a long time with the GoPro without getting much jitters there but it didn't fit the music it just was boring to watch it for 15 seconds or so so I had to remove it even if it felt hard I had to cut it in two clips that we have the first part there then makes a cut and then the second part it's still cool but I would have loved to have the full clip in there. Okay, let's come to transitions. I know you guys love that. And here's the first transition of this video or a smooth, fancy transition. That is the mass transition here with the tree. So in the first shot, you see me going up and then the tree transitions into the next shot. And doing that takes a lot of time, but it's actually not too complicated. In that case here, I added a draw mass so I can draw points around that tree. And then I have to adjust these points for each frame. So here you can see when I skip frame by frame, the mass changes all the time and here in Final Cut you can see here in the right side in the effects panel that here is this keyframe tool so if I want to add keyframes for certain effects or settings of these effects then I can just click on here and then every time I make a change for every frame it adds a keyframe and it animates in between but here because the motion is not really steady I really had to change the keyframes manually for every single frame which was a lot of work I also overlaid it with a motion blur plugin from Ryan Nangle and that kind of hides the imperfections of the mask a little bit that definitely helps too but let's come to the next transition that I want to show you and that's here when I start my drone there you can see a leaf coming into the frame 
and then it makes the screen dark. That's actually just a plugin from Motion VFX that I use here. M Transition Shade, that's a paid plugin, costs a bit of money, but I really like it because these transitions look really elegant and they did a good job here. Not sponsored. And then we can also come directly to the next transitions that I used here in this video and that are Luma Fade transitions. Here I also use a plugin from Mark Webster, not sponsored. There I used Reverse Luma Black. What it basically does is, you can see here at first we have the sky on top and the sky is pretty bright and this plugin makes all the bright parts transparent at first and then it makes the dark parts of the image transparent. I could also do that manually. It just takes longer than the plugin, so I used the plugin for it. Okay, so much for the Luma Fade transition, but I think the transition that you really want to know how I did it is this front flip transition from the drone. You can see that here and there's actually no transition at all. It's a simple jump cut, but of course I use some tricks here. So basically I do the front flip with a drone. You can do that with FPV drones. And this here is actually just a time-lapse shot, shot in raw photos on the GoPro Hero 10. This is how it looks straight out of camera. That's actually great. It's around, I think, six or seven K resolution. So you have a lot of space to crop in and animate it. And that's exactly what I did. I use spatial conform here type fill so it fills out the whole frame and then I use the transform tool here to zoom in like you see at the very beginning I zoomed in to 150% at the very end of the clip I I'm at 100% so there you see the full width of the image and I also animated the position on the Y it's 1080 up so up in the sky here pretty much fully and then I animate it down also with keyframes. So you see here, this is all animated in post. And then I also have the cinematic bars on top, which cut off even more from the image. And that's why this animation comes even better. It goes perfectly into each other, even if I only have a jump cut. And that's something that you, sh you always want to do when you do smooth transitions. Always make sure that one clip ends in the same way as the next clip starts. And then it's always super easy to do. Of course, I did a little bit more here. I used this adjustment layer there to put a zoom effect in there for the zoom out to the next clip. And we will come to that actually now because this is also a really nice plugin here for zooming out and slide transitions and so on. That's from Ryan Nangle. You can see that he is actually a title and not an actual transition, but this is actually the good thing about it. We have pen down, pen down two, pen left one, pen left two. In that case, you have zoom out one and zoom out two. And what these do is, in the first clip, this zoom out one zooms in, like into the clip actually, and in the second clip in this zoom out here it kind of mirrors the edges of the frame then it also zooms in so for example sometimes half shots where i already have to zoom in in the second shot or in the first one maybe at the end and then i don't need the zoom in effect on both shots i only need it on one and that's why i can be really flexible with these titles and here i used it to simply zoom out to go into the temple i used the adjustment layer here because with this plugin doesn't come any blur and when i use Ryan Nangle's motion blur plugin on top it didn't really perform well so I decided to do an adjustment layer and on this adjustment layer I put the zoom blur effect from Final Cut and here I keyframed the zoom blur like you can see here zoom blur is at zero and at the end of the clip it's at 26 when I have the zoom blur under the zoom out transition you can see this black lines here at the edges that doesn't happen if I add the zoom blur on top. Yeah, these transitions and so on are really complicated. You need to be able to imagine how you want to transition from one shot to the other and you need to know what options you have and then you can make these things happen and all of that takes experience. Here's also another cool example for a transition. I actually crashed my drone and I used this rotation of the drone to translate into the next clip. So there I use a simple perspective transition also from Ryan Nang so it kind of rotates out into the next clip. But yeah, so much about transitions. Let's now come to animations because I obviously animated it a lot. And there's also the th strengths of the GoPro Hero 10. It has 23 megapixels for time lapses and it has 5.4K resolution in video. That means that you can crop in a lot and that allows you to add animations and to reframe it in post. So here directly in the first clip of my foot, I insert an animation. Here the camera stood still 
still on the ground on a tripod, it didn't move at all. But you can see this zoom out effect that that via keyframes. So here you see on a transform, it starts at 120% zoom. I added a keyframe there. And then at the very end, it's at 100% zoom. Final Cut automatically animates the rest in between those keyframes. And also what helps here is the cinematic bars, this black bars that I added on top. I use a plugin from Envato Elements here for that. It's a premium platform, but if you don't want to pay for it, you can also just Google widescreen crop for Final Cut Pro. You will find plugins there that you can use. Now I have to restart my computer. <laughs> now I forgot where I was. <laughs> Okay, finally fixed the issues and here is the next thing that I wanted to show you like here in the airplane scene for example, there I reverse clip, you don't always have to use your clips in the forward motion, when it fits better you can also reverse them. Now the reason why I did that here was that I just wanted to match the motion of both clips a bit more like both flying backwards, I'm actually flying through that airplane but I wanted to fade to black there because it fitted the music very good, let's watch that. Boom. So there it's like, yeah, the music kind of makes a stop, so I wanted to have it black there. And there it just fit it better if I fly into the app plane and then it suddenly gets dark. And the next thing that's kind of special that I did here when it comes to animations is that I extended transitions with animations. And here I used this pen right transition from Ryan Nangle, you remember from the transition sections. So as you can see, this clip speeds up in kind of a hyperlapse and then it ends into the next clip where you see me walking. And the first thing that I did here was to animate this clip. Like this is again only a static shot where only the camera was placed on a tripod. And now as you can see here, I used transform cropped into 110%. Then I used the X X here to animate it from left to right. And I do that only because I want to extend the motion from the hyperlapse shot before into this shot that already looks a lot better. But at the very beginning, it's a bit too slow directly after the hyperlapse. And that's why I also added this pen right to effect here from Ryan Nangle's smooth transition layers pack. And now it looks perfect. That's also something that I want to advise you here. If you want to combine two clips with a transition, try to somehow make that these clips move in the same direction. It mustn't be actual camera movement. You can also animate that in post, especially if you have footage in 5.4K. And apart from all of that, I obviously also did a lot of color grading, but that would really be a bit too much to show all of that. You could just look at this drone starting clip here, how many layers of color grading I have here. Like I started with color finale and then I had lots of other stuff to really make everything pop in the background and so on. So that would be too much for this video. But to learn more about that, you can check out my other tutorials here. I will leave the GoPro playlist here. I think there are also some color grading tutorials in there. Also have other general color grading tutorials on my channel. And I also have my GoPro masterclass where I also teach you all the shooting, video editing and color grading. And I also have a special color grading course here. Yeah, so there's so much content on my channel. Just check that out as well and I see you there.